massive beak. It has very long arms with extremely long claws and long legs also with very long claws. Armed with weapons ideal for attacking small prey and breaking eggs, Oviraptor was cast as the villain of the Cretaceous. In the years since Roy Chapman Andrews explored the Gobi, the Cold War closed the desert to Western scientists. Then, in 1993, Mongolia invited the American Museum of Natural History back. Dinosaur hunters Michael Novacek and Mark Norell are among the first Westerners to revisit the site of the Andrews expedition. Today, eggs are still common, but no one has seen inside them. Now, Mark Norell is about to make the coolest discovery of his career, the first ever embryo of a meat-eating dinosaur. Overnight, these tiny bones would transform the image of egg-stealing Oviraptor. On the inside of it, instead of finding a protoceratops, which everyone had always imagined would, would have been found on the inside of that, there was an, a baby Oviraptor. So clearly, is that the Oviraptor, when it died in the 1920s at the Flaming Cliff, it wasn't actually predating on that nest. Um, in all likelihood, it was the parent of that nest. A 75-year-old mistake had been corrected. Oviraptor wasn't a thief. It was a caring parent. The team went on to excavate a whole nest of eggs with the skeleton of an oviraptor on top of it. The find spoke volumes about dinosaur behavior. These oviraptors that are roosting on the nest have their legs bent forward and flexed very much like an ostrich sits on the eggs. The arms are round. It's almost as if the, the animal's incubating these eggs in a squatting position. Remarkably bird-like behavior. Oviraptor's behavior was a stunning revelation. But it was only the first of a string of big surprises that would end a century-old debate. One hundred thirty million years ago, in China, a primitive lake buzzes with life. The shrieks of ancient creatures fill the air. As the dinosaurs come to drink, a rumble is heard in the distance. A mighty volcano explodes, sending a column of poisonous gas and dust thousands of feet into the air. A million tons of ash fall from the sky, suffocating every living thing for miles around. Today, the site of this prehistoric disaster lies near the city of Bei Piao in the province of Liaoning. Once the heart of the Manchurian dynasty, Bei Piao was the home of the most powerful emperor of all China. Now its glory has faded. The city makes its living from mining and agriculture. Early one morning in 1996, local farmers set off for work. One of them, Li Yin Fang, took a detour to explore a hillside formed from the volcanic ash that destroyed the ancient lake. 
there he uncovered an unusual slab of rock. Lee realized he had something special and took it home for a closer look. A good fossil can fetch a month's salary. What Li Yin Fang had found would turn out to be the most valuable fossil ever discovered in China. At the National Geological Museum in Beijing, he showed it to paleontologist Ji Chang. In the box was a fossilized dinosaur unlike anything he'd ever seen. When the farmer gave me this fossil, my first impression was that the preservation was absolutely amazing. Out of 10,000 fossils, it is number one. Not only every bone had been preserved, clearly visible are its ribs, its eyes, and even its internal organs. Here was a predatory dinosaur distantly related to the raptors. Ji Chang named it Sinoceropteryx, meaning Chinese dragon wing. A two-legged carnivore, three feet in length with long legs and sharp teeth. It had the speed and smarts to catch fast-moving prey, but it also had something never seen before on a dinosaur. Immediately, I could see there was a short layer of something on the surface of the skin. This left a deep impression on me. I thought there were two possibilities as to what this layer was. One was that it was hair, and the other was that it was some kind of feather-related structure. Thin filaments, ranging from a quarter to two inches long, covered parts of its body. Were they feathers? Overnight, Sinoceropteryx became the focus of a debate that's been raging for over a hundred years. Did dinosaurs cheat extinction to live on as birds? The controversy began in 1861 with the discovery of a unique fossil that had preserved feathers. Because only birds have feathers, it was christened Archaeopteryx, which means ancient wing. Archaeopteryx was the first bird, but its skeleton was just like a dinosaur's. So, did it evolve from a dinosaur? To prove it, there had to be a missing link, a dinosaur with feathers. Sinoceroptyx appeared to be the missing link, but the evidence was inconclusive. Microscopic photos showed the filaments were tangled and matted, making it difficult to isolate individual strands. Critics said the feathers could be shredded muscle tissue. Others claimed mistakes were made during the preparation of the fossil. So the debate went unresolved. Today, a fort protects the site where Sinoceropteryx was found. One of the most fossil-rich regions in the world, it's been dubbed Paleo-Pompeii, after the ancient Roman city buried under tons of volcanic ash. Now the Geological Museum controls the area and pays farmers to harvest fossils in the hope of making another discovery. In 1998, a farmer pulled another slab of rock out of the hillside and on it he found a dinosaur. Paleontologist Ji Chang hurried to the site. After we found Sinoceropteryx in 1996, we thought we had found the first feathered dinosaur, but we didn't think it would completely resolve the issue of the origin of birds. But another feathered dinosaur was discovered here in 1998. It was an entirely new creature. This dinosaur was related to the raptors. It had long legs for speed and sharp claws for grabbing.